Hello everyone, today I will show you how to install Anaconda and Visual Studio Code. I will show you my favorite extensions and how I run Python code using a Anaconda virtual environment and the command line. So let's get to it. We will now install Anaconda. So just go to anaconda.com. I'll download this here. But I of course want to keep it. Right, this is ready to be installed. That's alright. Yep, that's okay. Okay, yep, that's okay. I also want to have Python 3.10. Okay. Alright, this is completed. I don't need that, I think. Cool, so of course there is the Anaconda Navigator. Um, but I don't think I will use that. Actually, haven't used it in a while. More importantly, is actually the Anaconda or Conda prompt. But let's just double check both. So, yeah. That's the navigator. All right. Yes, I want to quit. I'm more interested in the Anaconda prompt which I'm in here uh, I can see already this is the virtual environment this is base and I think I should be able to do something here okay so this seems to be working I am pretty sure I can now install a bunch of things let's just double check conda and list can check that we have the base yes that looks good it's a user that's cool uh, I think I can also say something like this env actually the, the other way around and the, the, we should should give me the uh, whatever is installed in base okay cool all right next up we will install visual studio code as our IDE so we're going here and we are downloading for Windows in my case. And we'll keep that installing. I'm accepting this. This is where I want to install this stuff. Yep. I just want to keep it like that. And we can launder it. That's pretty much that. I will now set up um, some basics in Visual Studio Code. Um, generally, here over here, there are the extensions. So I guess I have a couple of favorites. Um, generally, maybe we can start with that even, but I mean, that's just really personal preference. Uh, what I like is um, actually I like the Dracula, um, but I recently found a very cool new one, which is called Ayu. Ayu Mirage, to be exact. So it's this one. I'll just install that. Okay, very, very important. <laughs> so what I think is very important indeed is the, the graph. I'll install that. As well as so you can visualize a bit better um, if you're working with GitHub and so on. What else do I usually have is live share. I will be installing so you can collaborate on your code. And what I also really like is the material icon. Icon theme. So you have really nice little icons next to your file names. All right, then I also 
think prettier is something very nice to help with prettifying let's say your code installing that I also like rainbow brackets I saw that this version um, sort of got an update so maybe um, this is rainbow brackets 2.0 uh, I guess I'll install that so you know exactly like where you are in terms of your brackets uh, or your brackets will help you to uh, with color to navigate in nested kind of loops and so on then I guess last but not quite least is this to do tool um, with the tree so you can add to do tags in your code and they show up in a, in a list which they are sorted in okay and next would be git lens here we are installing that all right very nice so I want to show you two more things um, and that is under preferences settings um, first of all that would be the formatter um, and so basically um, format on save um, that is very handy I think each time you're saving your script it's formatted um, there's no default formatter currently so I suggest to specifically change that for Python and um, C sharp for example so we can set it for Python for Martin and here it is set to set to black um, yeah that's correct provider I think it's called Python formatting this should be black so for example right okay and the other thing is um, a setting where you can change what you are actually seeing on the bottom of your file you can change what is written here so if you have multiple folders open for example um, it's basically super unreadable so what I really like to do is um, I would basically use the um, folder name as well as you can write here like that um, the remo oops oh the remote name like so all right cool so I can save that and close it great all right so let's add a couple of Python specific extensions so on our left you click extensions and of course we need Python installing that while this is installing next up would be black formatter for Python actually I don't know if I can click install and it will just queue it up I hope so um, I definitely want to have Jupyter all right so last thing I want to show you is how I'm now running um, a bit of code here um, so we'll just create a new Python file we're just gonna call it I'm just gonna save it on the desktop actually s.py and in here of course we need some code very creative hello world great so um, there are a couple of ways how to actually run this program here now um, so first of all we probably need a interpreter and that in that case we can pick down here so if you click here um, you should see for example um, Python 3.10.9 um, base right that is basically coming this is the base environment of our anaconda so if you select that we should pretty much right off the bat be able to execute this 
Um, all right, so it executed the program. Here's our output. Perfectly fine. So, but what you can see here is that it is not recognizing Conda here. It tries to actually activate our base environment, but it it cannot do it. So what I have to do here is I will go over here and say select default profile and I will add the command prompt uh, like this. And so let me close this. And so when I click play, it should activate the base um, environment, even though it's activated, but and then it will run the program. Okay, so this is the first way. And the second way is, of course, typing Python test.py, which does the same. It executes this program here, right? I could add parameters to my command and so on and so forth. But, and so the third one, I guess the most important one, I feel like, is with creating a launch JSON with a Python file here, Python current file, that is exactly my file. So it's essentially executing or it's debugging the file I have opened like that, but I can also specify specifically um, which file that might be. So if I copy that path here and I'll edit here, um, probably have to change this just like that, saving that launch file. And then I'm just gonna say my custom debug, whatever, go to debug, select my custom debug um, and press play, right? And also here it executes that um, program, but of course now I can actually um, add breakpoints, right? And then I'm saving this running this again and will, the program will stop here and I can, with the debug console, I can actually check what's going on um, while this is running, right? All right, so that's pretty much that. Um, I hope this was helpful um, and have fun programming and see you next time.